Hey there, welcome to another edition of uh, Joe's Record Store. And as a lot of my uh, viewers and my friends out there know, you know, I'm a, you know, I've been a long time Striper fan. And, uh, well, um, around the same time that I, I was uh, really getting into the music of Striper, um, I discovered this band through, uh, you know, one of my little, you know, rebel punk rock skater friends when I was in middle school. Um, and uh, when I first heard Blood Good, you know, at the time, I really, I mean, I thought religion in general was a joke, and I didn't really want anything to do with Jesus at all. But, you know, like Striper, it was, uh, you know, one of those seeds sown. Um, in fact, you know, I didn't even know that they were a Christian metal band. I knew Striper sung about Jesus. And then these, you know, and, and my skater friend, he had the, uh, he had a cassette of Detonation that he let him, he let me borrow. And ironically, my skater friend that let me borrow the Blood Good tape, I mean, he thought religion in general was pretty stupid, and he actually made fun of me for liking Striper. And at the time, Striper was the only band that I knew that, you know, actually, you know, sung about Jesus and how good, you know, God and Jesus is. So... And it was still, you know, not new to me, and I mean, at the time, I, I didn't even know there was a such thing as Christian rock, you know, let alone heavy metal, but, you know, number two in uh, um, one of those bands that made a really big impact in my life uh, was a seed sown is Blood Good. Um, I mean, as far as, like, notoriety, I mean, they were probably number two only to Striper. And, and they were pioneers. I mean, they were really making headways. And, and, you know, they're controversial. And like Striper, I have a lot of blood good stuff. So um, I'll have to break it into several episodes to, the same way like I have to do with my Striper stuff because I have so much. And uh, these are the... I've got my two Blood Good vinyls as their first two albums. In fact, they're the only uh, Blood Good vinyls I have. Um, maybe I'll get the you know other ones later. But you know, collecting does hurt the wallet. You know, and you do it in you know when you get a little over enthusiastic. But you know, thank God I'm a cheap skate, and you know, I just. Uh, so I'm always trying to get the cheapest price possible. Wow, I really am Dutch. Um, inside joke. Um, this is their first safe self-titled album, Blood Good. Um, I found this secondhand in uh, American Oldies, you know, back in the early '90s, because you know I like to. Or was it? Oh, it was the mid '90s. I was only out of high school a couple years, and. Uh, and again, you know, I got turned on to this band in middle school, and um, in middle school, I was definitely not, uh, you know, the uh, goody-goody Christian kid that, you know, I later became, you know, in high school. I mean, I was, uh, you know, I was like little angry antichrist. I was the evil kid. I was the bad kid. I was... Uh, you know, if you had your a respectable son or daughter, you probably didn't want them hanging around with me. I was probably the the bad heavy metal rocker kids that you know the war they other parents warned their kids to you know not be around. And you know, I did go to a church youth group, not in, of my own free will, because it was obligatory. But and at the time, I didn't want to be there. And and to the other, you know, the real goody goody church kids, I was the evil kid that, you know, they weren't supposed to have anything to do with, um, except for a youth leader named Randy, who was, you know, an off, when he was, he was a young Air Force guy when he was off duty, um, uh, in fact, um, you know, when I brought up Blood Good and Striper, I mean, he, I was surprised, you know, wow, you like the same music I do, and when I heard this, I mean, I didn't get the sudden urge to run to the nearest church and yeah, I gotta go grab a Bible right now. You know, I gotta get back to church. But, um, I mean, it was still new. I mean, um, my attitude was, you know, oh, well, you know, metal bands have been doing the uh, Satan thing for a while. I guess it's about time somebody did something different. And, uh, but, you know, I wasn't ready to, you know, go to the altar and, you know, make the big prayer. I mean, I, again, I thought, you know, religion in general was pretty silly. 
even though you know I, I adored Striper and I would, I love this band to death, you know, because of their music. But at the time, you know, like Striper, I didn't even know they were Christian when I first heard them. I just thought, you know, it's just another, you know, ooh, a real intense heavy metal band like, you know, Man O' War. Um, th um, this album I actually heard after the second, but it's their debut, Blood Good. I mean, it does sound, may sound kind of cheesy now. I know the outfits, you know, look kind of goofy now, but, you know, it, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, if I saw that, you know, that meant that, Wow, you know, this is a heavy metal band. I know what music they're playing. And, uh, um, and, you know, except the Lemmy. They had real good vocal harmonies. I mean, Les Carlson has this awesome banshee voice that, you know, can make the earth shake around him, you know, make the ground shake. I wish I could sing like him. And, uh, this is the, the bass player, Michael Bloodgood, who the band is named after. David Sefiro. Who you know was on the first three records? No, that's Michael Bloodgood. I'm sorry, I feel retarded now. That's Michael Bloodgood. That's the drummer. And um, again, you know, just uh, I, mean, I was just glad that I found something different. So, uh, um, and, I mean, I was excited, you know, because you know any kind of different heavy metal was interesting to me, and. Um, Actually, <laughs> and you know, again, like I said, my skater friend that let me borrow his blood good tape that his Christian c cousin gave him that I didn't even know about that until after the fact. Yeah, this band's weird. Like, now let's let me hear it. Come on. And I mean, I love that album so much. And actually, I, I, this is a good debut, but I mean, Detonation, which is this one. Um, I got this one. I found this one still sealed in a, a new and used record store. I had to have it, you know, because you know I just love this band to death. You know, just like Striper, you know, I consider them, you know, real significant in my growing up years. And uh, you know, at the time, you know, when I was, you know, when I discovered Blood Good, um, uh, I was one of the problem kids, the at risk kids. So. Uh, you know, like I said, I didn't get the urge to want to run to church and grab a Bible and, you know, get in a, a circle study, but, I mean, it was one of those seeds sown. And, you know, the first time I heard Battle of the Flesh, I didn't even know what they, you know, the, now, yes, the battle between flesh and spirit. I mean, I thought it was like, you know, some kind of fantasy battle song, like, you know, something Man o War would do, <laughs> you know, like those those uh, ancient warrior fantasy songs. That's what I thought it was. I mean, I didn't even... In the song Live Wire, I mean, I thought it was about some kind of wild warrior or something. It did... You know, and... God, raise him up from the dead. He's... And it took a while. Oh, they're singing about Jesus. You know, the Messiah. You know, that should have been a obvious, but it took a, a while to, you know, sink in. Eat the flesh... Actually, like, this is the one that kind of gave me a, okay, what's going on? Eat the flesh. Drink the blood of... Hey, I heard that in Catholic Mass when I was a kid. They're singing about church stuff. I mean, I thought it was funny, like, because, you know, I mean, being told, you know, how evil and satanic my heavy metal music was, and, you know, I'm listening to this band, and they're singing about, like, stuff that I've heard about in church. Okay. And uh, probably like the most, uh, I guess, heart wrenching track on this one. I mean, the um, "Alone in Suicide." Um, I mean, if you've if you've heard interviews with Blood Good, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people that um, there was of kids that back in the '80s that were, you know, thinking about checking out early. You know, they heard this song, and. Uh, um, yeah, they and you know they they changed their mind and uh, yeah they became Bible believing Christians. You know, heartbeat of the city. You know, kind of like you know being down and out. Um, like I said, you know, I I mean at the time you know just the concept of you know a metal band, you know, let alone a rock band singing about Jesus and you know proclaiming the faith that was brand new to me. And again, you know, it was a seed sown. Um, and uh, I'm really thankful for it. And 
I mean, just like Striper, if I ever see these guys in concert, I'll probably you know, have a serious emotional breakdown. And uh, recently I got the reissues, the CD reissues by of these uh, two first albums. So again, you know, I'm breaking them into into pieces where I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the cassettes, and I'm gonna talk about the Blood Good CDs I have. But I mean, if you want like one of the most landmark bands in the history of Christian hard rock and metal, you know, aside from Striper, Blood Good is it. If, if you're one of the younger kids, you know, just discovering it, you know, the, um, I mean, definitely, you know, go back in history, check these guys out. I mean, I think these albums are still as powerful today as, you know, when I first heard them way back when. All right, uh, rock on, stay metal. Thanks for watching Joe's Record Store. Battle of the Flesh.